We're talking the options portfolio today. Last month of results, potential plays out there or trade setups that I like, as well as talking about earnings and how they can have an impact on your trades. Let's get into it. The portfolio is sitting at 12,203 as of October 25th. If I compare that to the video I made about a month ago, we were sitting at 12,117. If you're wondering how my returns on a percentage basis went down, but the value went up of the portfolio, well, we have to remember that I have deposits each month. And when I deposit, even if my portfolio didn't gain anything, my total percentage return will go down. And that's why it's important to constantly be comparing against this return percentage, which I do the same thing like I invest in the S&P 500. For the last month, we did lose some alpha in the portfolio, meaning that the S&P 500 returns caught up a little bit with the portfolio. Part of that is the S&P 500 being at all-time highs. My portfolio tends to be a little hedge, meaning I don't have as much delta to the upside as if I was just long the stock market. The stock market just rages higher quickly, I'm probably going to underperform. Whereas if the market is choppy, it goes down a little bit, that's where I gain the alpha and I can actually outperform the overall market. The big reason though why I'm underperforming this past month is because of one position and it's our favorite position to complain about. It's Corsair. It's because the company came out and reported earnings earlier than expected and their prelim numbers disappointed, especially when it comes to revenue. Now they're still reporting their earnings, I believe sometime at the beginning of November. They didn't give the full picture on profitability, so there's still an event coming up, but the stock dropped from around that $27 area now to 25. So we ended up rolling the calls down. See, this is the one issue with wheeling stocks is that I have a $720 loss in the stock position. So 100 shares because my cost basis is 3,250. But if we look at the overall profitability of this position, the cost basis for this is around $27.38, I wanna say. We're in a much better position than what this is saying because as we've had this position on, we've continued to sell calls, buy them back for cheaper, sell calls, buy them back for cheaper. And now we're at a point where we've rolled the strike down to 27 and a half. We do need a move in Corsair in order to help out the overall portfolio. What sucks about being invested in Corsair is I constantly have the viewpoint that the stock is undervalued. Obviously the preliminary results coming out and them lowering their revenue forecast does bring the value down in my eyes. But even though the value comes down, it goes from a $40 price target to the mid to lower 30s, which still presents good upside from this 25 level. Having the position on and continuing to have that position, there's a reason I still think it's undervalued. And who knows, maybe the stack goes up from here. What's crazy is over the past 30 days, there hasn't been too much activity in my portfolio. You can see the 30 days and there's one position that I've been able to get in and out a decent amount and that's Cleveland Cliffs. This one I've been selling puts in and I've been able to buy them back for profits. Clover is another one that I reinitiated a new position back on October 11th. But other than Cleveland Cliffs and Clover, you can see Corsair, this is an old position. Facebook is a newer one. Flowers, that's an old position. AT&T, this is something that I sold at the very end of September and getting tested. But really what's keeping me in the game in a lot of these positions, everything outside of US Steel and Facebook, and we already talked about Corsair, is the theta decay. Because these stocks have been trending downwards, especially AT&T, and you can look at the PNL open for a lot of these flowers, kind of close to break even. Tattoo Chef, even though it's been trending down for a while, we're actually up in there. And US Steel, we just put this on last Friday and it shot up today a decent amount. We're almost say 50% profit here. Really not too much activity. And that's another reason that if you look at when this was done around September 23rd and the stock market was trading around 443, the overall S&P 500 is up from that level. So if the stocks that I'm bullish in the portfolio have kind of been trading sideways or down, it's another reason that we kind of lost some alpha. But that doesn't mean we can't get right back because we can't look at the past. We have to look at the current setup in the market, current portfolio, and how to play it. Speaking of the current portfolio, it's slightly bullish. So with a 14 delta beta weighted to something like the S&P 500, if SPY goes up a dollar, portfolio should make around $14. For theta, we're at 11 
11.7, so a little less than our threshold of 0.1%, but that's okay with the VIX trading around those 52-week lows and the markets at all-time highs. With Vega being negative 20, if we do have an implied volatility expansion, it would hurt the portfolio, and if the volatility continues to contract, that would help the portfolio. Prior to this video, my favorite setup was Facebook, with it getting hammered with Snapchat earnings and coming down, but with an IVR 54, and my thinking was that it was kind of already priced in to have lower guidance due to the Apple privacy issues. I think Facebook is probably worth a lot more than 330. Over 400 is kind of where I see it going back to. With all that said, I put on a credit put spread. After hours, Facebook is up a little bit. So we'll probably see some implied volatility come out of Facebook as well as making a little bit on this Delta move, if this holds. The next favorite play on the board is probably at t because it's already had earnings. You can see next to a lot of these ticker symbols, they have an E and a number next to them, meaning that the implied volatility or the implied volatility rank is elevated because there's a binary event where new material information may come out. With at t it's already come out. They had earnings. It was pretty good in my opinion. And when it comes to the valuation of at t this thing has gotten absolutely hammered. And there's a certain point where at t yes, it may be slightly a value trap, but when I'm selling puts in at t around 25 and Wall Street analysts think it's worth over 30 as well as fair value is being calculated in the lower 30s. This might be slightly elevated. So even if we go with a $30 price target on at t the trading around 25, I feel pretty safe selling puts. It's a very risk averse play. Something else I look at when SPY gets above an RSI of 70 is looking at short positions that I can put in here, usually spreads. So something like a debit put spread or a credit call spread and add some short delta to the overall portfolio while trying to hedge near what I think is an area that we may pull back. Right down here, I was mostly long positions, or I was all long positions. But now that we've rallied, and in my opinion, had these easy rally days, because after a fearful sell-off, we'll get some pretty big spikes as kind of everyone calms down around events such as Evergrande or the debt crisis. All that stuff is kind of in the back of people's heads already, and we've had the easy move to the upside. Now we get to a point where earnings and it's more of a grind to move higher in the markets. So this is where I would put on a short position just to hedge the overall portfolio. Now you saw me mention the earnings. I personally try to avoid earnings if I can. If I'm entering an options position and see that I can pick a strike date that avoids an earnings, I'll do that just because yes, the IVR may be higher for a lot of these stocks. You saw me looking at that watch list and I passed over a lot of those opportunities. The IVR is higher, but that is because of the earning. I don't have a crystal ball and I don't know if they're gonna miss or smash. Even if they hit expectations or blow past them, it still may upset the market. And so you'll get wild swings after earnings. My strategy is more around, I know the earnings, I know the expectations, and then I can kind of value a stock and have an opinion on where it should be going going over the next couple months. And that is way easier to manage than managing a 10% move in a stock when the expectation was for it to move 4%. That's my update on the options portfolio as well as some plays that I think have good setups if I wasn't already in them myself. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to hit that like button as well as subscribe to Main Street Wolf. We'll be talking investing, stock options, anything to do with money. Thanks guys for watching and have a great day.